Hi, if you're new to my videos, welcome. And my channel is all about international investing that everyone has access to, not just Americans. And today I'll be showing you exactly how to make a stock market trade. And this is exactly what I do. We're going to use the Saxo Bank trading platform because that's what I use. And it's because it's really simple to use and the platform's really easy to understand. It's a very simple way to get access to the stock market and we'll be going through my account. My favorite things about Saxo Bank are they are a really big, reputable company. They are regulated in over 15 different countries like the UK, Denmark, Singapore. Their trading fees are really low, about four US dollars for an American stock. And their customer service is actually pretty good. Well, I haven't had any problems with it so far, so I think it's pretty good. But I also think it's not suitable for absolutely everyone. If you are looking to be a high frequency trader or a day trader, then I really don't think this platform is for you. I think there are more sophisticated like day trading platforms out there. I think Interactive Brokers is the one that comes to mind. But look, I don't use Interactive Brokers. I don't use any of these day trading platforms. So please do your own research. And the second reason it might not be suitable for you is if you don't have 10,000 US dollars. The reason is, which I'll show you soon, is that there's a bit of a sweet spot for getting the best fees when you're using the platform. And that's around about 7,000 US dollars per trade. Four US dollars is actually really low compared to a lot of the competition out there. In Australia, there's Commonwealth Bank, which is the main uh, platform in Australia, and they charge up to 60 US dollars for an American stock. When you first sign up to Saxo and before you get access to your trading account, you'll have to submit some like certification documents and new customer documents and your ID and things like that. And unfortunately, this is part of the deal with a regulated company. So expect this to take a little bit of time. You might need to fax your documentation to them. Uh, I think when I did this about four years ago, I actually mailed my certified documents to Saxo directly. Once your account is ready, you're going to have this option to trade on lots of different markets like the futures market, the CFD market, the bond market, unless you know what you're doing, you really only need the equities market. Now the equities market is really just another name for the stock market. All right, let's go into the platform. So this is what the uh, the login page looks like. So I'm just gonna log in now. I already have my details in and we just wait for this to load. Now, when we first get in, you'll see it looks quite complicated, but I'll go through everything in detail. So here we go. The first section that we're gonna look at here is where my on the right hand side, we're going to look for an instrument. An instrument is just another name for a company. So here we go, I'm just typing in Amazon, I'm making sure it's on the NASDAQ, which is the New York, pretty much the New York Stock Exchange. It's called the NASDAQ, but that's okay. And here it is. So this is Amazon's last traded price. It gives you all the information about the, the trading volume and all the other things that you need. Here's the chart. I like to put it up to one year to, just, just to see what the price has been doing. As you can see, it's gone crazy. This is just all the news related to Amazon. It's just some information about the company down the bottom. That's really all you need to know about this section. The next thing we're going to, do, to look at is we're going to go over to the, uh, the watch lists. Now the watch list is just over here on the left hand side. Oh, I'm just showing you now how to change the size of each of these widgets. So there you go, you just drag it like that. Now in the watch list, what we're gonna do is we wanna add an instrument or a company into our watch list so we can keep an eye on it in the future so we don't have to keep searching for it every time. So here's Amazon and I'm just adding it to the watch list just like that, very simple. The next thing we're going to look at is the positions. Now I've got all this blurred out because I don't wanna sh to show how much money I have in my account. But as you can see, I have 75 stocks. Now, 75 stocks doesn't mean I have 75 different companies. It means I have 75 different positions. For example, each month I buy the S&P 500 index funds from BlackRock and Vanguard, and over the years that adds up. I've just gone into the orders section now. So here are all the orders that I have currently like waiting to be filled. So you can see that I have the companies there and I have the prices. Uh, that I want to buy them for and then the current price and then I'm just going to show you how to cancel an order. So I've already got an order in Amazon and I've just cancelled it and now what's going to happen is a notification is going to pop up and now the notifications is interesting because the notification pop up that's going to happen, this shows you anything that sort of happens with your account. So if you've got some corporate actions to deal with which I'll show you in a moment or money is deposited or withdrawn from your account. Okay, so the next tab I've just gone into is called research. Now there's nothing really much in here that's of any interest, uh, except I like to go to the stocks tab sometimes. And when I scroll down a little bit further, uh, you'll see that it shows important earnings releases this week. So these are the companies that, that are going to release their, their new data, so their new financial documents for the quarter, and it goes through each of the companies that are gonna do, do it this week. Now, this is a really good reminder for me because uh, it really, I just check this because it reminds me to go back through the financial documents for my companies and check to make sure the numbers are still looking good. Okay, so now we're in the account tab. 
Now, in the account tab, there's lots of options here. A lot of it's about based on your performance and data about your account, but the only real section you really need to worry about is this other tab that I'm in right now. And in this other tab, there is contact support. Now, contacting support, I think, is uh, pretty easy. Uh, you just open a ticket just like that and just by pressing the open button, you can contact Saxo. The other option is corporate action events. This is, now I check this every week. I go into the corporate actions and there'll be active events come up there on the active events tab, but this is what a, an event looks like. Here is an event and you click on it and you have the option for some of your companies, not all of them, but some of them, to either receive the dividend as cash, as you can see there, or as securities. Now that just means more shares. So I wanted, I elected all of my shares, 27,000 of them, uh, to reinvest into more shares. So that's it. And you just press, you just press accept, and then that's it. So we're now back in the trading tab, and uh, as you can see, we have uh, the margin available. I'm just sort of, it's probably blurred out, but. The margin available is, uh, it's really what Saxo has offered to call, it's called margin lending. And it's essentially a loan for you to trade with. It's very, very risky. And I highly recommend never doing this. What happens is that you borrow your money against, you borrow money, sorry, against your cash in your account. So let's say you buy Apple shares with this borrowed money. Now, depending on how much you borrowed, you are at risk of what's called a margin call. This is when Apple share price falls like 20% and Saxo don't want to lose their money that they borrowed that you borrowed from them. So they automatically start taking money from your cash reserves. So they could take a lot of your money and you could get wiped out even if the stock only falls like 30, 40, 50%. And even worse, then the stock rebounds but you've lost all your cash. And anyway, taking leverage out is not a good idea. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm showing you how to create a trade. We're gonna actually make a trade right now. So I'm gonna do one right, right, right now. Well, I'm gonna place an order for a trade. So I've just clicked on the trade button, gone to Amazon. Now there's limit, stop, trailing, stop, all these different types of orders. Now, the only ones that are important are market and limit. Now, market means that if you were to place the order, it would just execute the, the trade straight away whenever the market opens. But I always like to put it, I always do limit orders. I always do limit orders. The next option is buy or sell. Now, I have a specific price. Now, if you watched my previous video, I calculated what I thought the value of Amazon share price was. And it's 1,687. That's what I think it's worth. Now, as you can see, the cost for this trade is going to cost me four dollars in fees, and in terms of how much I'm going to spend, is going to be well. Every time I change how many shares I want to buy, it changes what's called the nominal value, which is just how much I'm going to spend. So five thousand dollars at the moment for three shares. If I go to four shares, it goes up to six thousand seven hundred. If I go to five shares, it's eight thousand. But the fees have went up to five dollars. So the sweet spot here is four, four shares, about $7,000 is always about the right amount. And the duration I've got there is GTC. That just means good till canceled. So now I'm gonna place the order and it just gives me, I've got to confirm it, good to canceled, which means I have to cancel the order for it to ever happen. For it, sorry, for it to ever be canceled. Uh, it's not gonna cancel after like a day or a week. It's gonna wait until I've canceled it. There's another notification that's just popped up showing that the order's been placed. And here it is in my orders tab, I've got Amazon, four shares at $1,687. That's the current price, which is crazy. And my options there, if I want to modify or cancel that order. And that's it, that'll get fulfilled. Uh, now that order will be fulfilled when the price gets down to 1,687. Okay, now I've just logged out, that's it, that's it. That's all you need to know. And uh, I hope that was simple enough. I hope that was easy to understand. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment. I really hope that was helpful. Please let me know by liking the video. Now to fund the account, it's just like a normal bank transfer and I like to have my account in US dollars, but I think there's like 18 different currencies you can have your account set up in. It takes about two days at most for my money to arrive in my account and I get a notification inside my trading platform when the money has arrived. Now the minimum initial deposit that you can put into Saxo Bank is around about $10,000. Now I think you really want to have about $10,000 saved up before you start to invest anyway. Anything smaller than that and I think you should just wait until you get to $10,000 saved up. To deposit money and after your documentation has been approved and your account's been set up, an account representative will get in contact with you and provide you with the bank details to, for you to transfer the money. Now, please use the link in my description because Saxo Bank actually going to pay me a little bit of money if anyone signs up. Now, I'm not recommending Saxo Bank because they're going to pay me a little bit of money. I use Saxo Bank myself, as you have already seen, and it's my platform of choice. I hope you really enjoy using the platform and working with Saxo. 
I think it's really important to have a reputable stock market trading platform because over time, your, your money is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger inside this platform. And trust me, you don't want that extra risk of your trading platform going bankrupt. About two years ago, a trading platform called Halifax, which my parents were using and some really close friends of mine were using, they actually went bankrupt. So this was a really big wake-up call for me to investigate how stable a trading platform actually is. And because Saxo is one of the biggest trading platforms in the world, I think it is also one of the most stable. Any questions, please leave a comment. And if you haven't checked out my video on how I valued Amazon stock price, make sure you go and do that. It's, it's very interesting and you'll learn a lot.